Look up at the night sky with your own eyes, or marvel at images of the universe online, and you'll see the same thing. The inky, abysmal blackness of space, punctuated by bright stars, planets, or spacecraft. But why is it black? Why isn't space colorful like the blue daytime sky on Earth? Stay tuned to find out. Surprisingly, the answer has little to do with a lack of light. You would think that since there are billions of stars in our galaxy, billions of galaxies in the universe and other objects, such as planets, that reflect light, that when we look up at the sky at night, it would be extremely bright. Tenley Hutchinson Smith, a graduate student of astronomy and astrophysics at the University of California, Santa Cruz, UCSC, told Live Science in an email. But instead, it's actually really dark. Hutchinson Smith said this contradiction known in physics and astronomy circles as Olber's paradox, can be explained by the theory of space-time expansion. The idea that, because our universe is expanding faster than the speed of light, the light from distant galaxies might be stretching and turning into infrared waves, microwaves, and radio waves, which are not detectable by our human eyes. And because they are undetectable, they appear dark, black, to the naked eye. Miranda Apfel, who is also a graduate student of astronomy and astrophysics at UCSC, agreed with Hutchinson Smith. Stars give off light in all colors, even colors not visible to the human eye, like ultraviolet or infrared, she told Live Science. If we could see microwaves, all of space would glow. Apfel said this is because the cosmic microwave background, light energy from the Big Bang that was scattered by protons and electrons existing during the early universe, still fills all of space. Another reason interstellar and interplanetary space appear dark is that space is a nearly perfect vacuum. Recall that Earth's sky is blue because molecules that make up the atmosphere, including nitrogen and oxygen, scatter a lot of visible light's component, blue and violent wavelengths from the sun in all directions, including toward your eye. However, in the absence of matter, light travels in a straight line from its source to the receiver. Because space is a near-perfect vacuum, meaning it has exceedingly few particles, there is virtually nothing in the space between stars and planets to scatter light to our eyes. And with no light reaching the eyes, they see black. That said, a 2021 study in the Astrophysical Journal suggests that space may not be as black as scientists originally thought. Through NASA's New Horizons mission to Pluto and the Kuiper Belt, researchers have been able to see space without light interference from Earth or the Sun. The team sifted through images taken by the spacecraft and subtracted all light from known stars, the Milky Way, and possible galaxies, as well as any light that may have leaked in from camera quirks. The background light of the universe they found was still twice as bright as predicted. The reasons for the additional brightness, which remain unknown, will be the focus of future studies. Until then, one thing seems likely, space could very well be more charcoal than pitch black. Why is space a vacuum? A vacuum is an empty place, which space nearly achieves. Space is an almost perfect vacuum, full of cosmic voids. And in short, gravity is to blame. But to really understand the vacuum of our universe, we have to take a moment to understand what a vacuum really is, and what it's not. So, what is a vacuum, and why isn't space a true vacuum? First, forget the vacuum cleaner as an analogy to the vacuum of space. Jackie Fahardi, a senior scientist in the Department of Astrophysics at the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, told Live Science. The household cleaning machine effectively fills itself with dirt and dust sucked out of your carpet. That is, the vacuum cleaner uses differential pressure to create suction. The suction cleaner might be a better name than the vacuum cleaner, but the vacuum of space is the opposite. By definition, a vacuum is devoid of matter. Space is almost an absolute vacuum, not because of suction, but because it's nearly empty. That emptiness results in extremely low pressure. And while it's impossible to emulate the emptiness of space on Earth, scientists can create extremely low pressure environments called partial vacuums. Even with the vacuum cleaner analogy out, understanding the concept of the vacuum is almost foreign because it's so contradictory to how we exist, Fahardi said. Our experience as humans is completely confined to a very dense, crowded, and dynamic fraction of the universe. So it can be hard for us to really understand nothingness or emptiness, she said. But in reality, what's normal for us on Earth 
is actually rare in the context of the universe, the vast majority of which is nearly empty. Gravity is king. On average, space would still be pretty empty even if we didn't have gravity. There's just not a lot of stuff relative to the volume of the universe in which you put that stuff, according to Caltech theoretical astrophysicist Cameron Hummels. The average density of the universe, according to NASA, is 5.9 protons, which is a positively charged subatomic particle per cubic meter. But then gravity amplifies the emptiness in certain regions of the universe by causing the matter in the universe to congregate. Basically, any two objects with mass will be attracted to each other. That's gravity. Put another way, matter likes to be around other matter, Fahardi said. In space, gravity draws nearby objects closer together. Together their collective mass increases and more mass means they can generate a stronger gravitational pull with which to draw even more matter into their cosmic clump. Mass increases, then gravitational pull, then mass. It's a runaway effect, Hummel said. But even the vacuum of space is not truly pure. Between galaxies, there's less than one atom in every cubic meter, meaning intergalactic space isn't completely empty. It has far less matter, however, than any vacuum humans could simulate in a lab on Earth. Meanwhile, the universe keeps expanding, Fahardi said, assuring that the cosmos will remain mostly vacant. It sounds so lonely, she added. Why is space so big? If we could go back in time, we would learn that not only was our universe a much smaller place, but that in the earliest stages, it wasn't impressively large at all. Space may not always have been a big place, and it's only the fact that our universe has expanded so thoroughly and relentlessly that makes us see it as so big and empty today. Looking at the universe today, there is no denying the enormity of its scale. Containing somewhere in the neighborhood of 400 billion stars, our Milky Way galaxy stretches for over 100,000 light years in diameter. The distances between the stars is enormous, with the closest star to our Sun, Proxima Centauri, located some 4.24 light years away, over 40 trillion kilometers distant. While some stars are clumped together in groups, either in multi star systems or star clusters of various types, the majority are like our Sun single stars that are relatively isolated from all the other stars within a galaxy. And once you go beyond our own galaxy, the universe becomes a much sparser place indeed, with only a fraction of the universe's volume actually containing galaxies. Most of the universe, as far as we can tell, is devoid of stars and galaxies entirely. Andromeda is located two and a half million light years away from us. A number of significantly smaller galaxies are present as well, including the Triangulum Galaxy, the local group's third largest, the Large Magellanic Cloud, and about 60 other much smaller galaxies, all contained within about 3 million light years of ourselves. Beyond that, galaxies are found clumped and clustered together throughout the universe, with a cosmic web consisting of large galaxy clusters connected by galaxy dotted filaments. The universe came to be this way because it not only expanded and cooled, but because it gravitated as well. The initially overdense regions preferentially attracted matter and gave rise to the structures we see. The underdense region gave up their matter to the denser ones, becoming the great cosmic voids that dominate the majority of the universe's volume. Centered on any observer, including ourselves, we can observe objects as far away as 46.1 billion light years in any direction. When you add it all up, that equates to a volume of 4.1 times 1032 cubic light years. With even 2 trillion galaxies in the universe, that means each galaxy on average has about 2 times 1020 cubic light years of volume to itself. If the galaxies were all evenly spaced throughout the universe, and they most definitely are not, you could put your finger down on a galaxy and draw a sphere around it that was approximately 6 million light years in radius and never hit another galaxy. Our location in the universe has hundreds of times the density of galaxies that we expect on average. In between the galaxy groups and clusters in the universe lies the majority of its volume, and it's mostly empty space. But the reason the universe is this large today is that it's expanded and cooled to reach this point. Even today, 
the universe continues to expand at a tremendous rate, approximately 70 kilometers a second megaparsec. At the furthest reaches of the universe, 46.1 billion light years away, the amount of universe that we can observe grows by an additional 6.5 light years with each year that passes by. Today, the universe extends for 46 billion light years in all directions, but that's because it's been 13.8 billion years since the Big Bang, and our universe contains a specific mix of dark energy, matter, and radiation in various forms. If we went back to when the universe was just 3 billion years old, about 20% of its current age, we'd find that it was only about 9 billion light years in radius, just 0.7% of its current volume. Now that you've watched the video, let us know what you think by leaving a comment in the section below. Thanks.